Hey guys, Brand here from nclvapor.com. Here to talk to you about the Fogger V2. All right, it is a Typhon GT clone. We're not here to talk about cloning. I won't talk about cloning. So many people can just come in and talk so many different angles on it. I'm not going to go there. Um, but I'm going to give you my honest experience with the device. I'm going to tell you what I have done with it. I'm going to tell you how to build it and show you how to build it and and so on. So. Where did I get it, and how much? How much was it? It was thirty-one ninety-nine. That's cheap, all right. For that, why not? If you could find it, get it. So, what did it come with? It came to me in two days with a screwdriver in here with bubble wrap and a bag of goodies with uh, canthal wire, O-rings, and a stainless steel hybrid wick, which is also what is installed on it when you get it. Um, it, I like this device. Sorry, it's hard for me to. Anyway, so Fogger is written on the device in Fogati writing. Why they do that? Stupid. Why? They didn't need that at all. It is. It works great. It works phenomenal. And they did not need to put the same font that the Fogati uses. It. Silly. Anyway, so it starts off with the drip tip. All right, comes stainless steel. All of it is stainless steel. It's 22 millimeters, and so the drip tip is loose. All right, but it just fell off. It's not going to fall out, but it it's not going to. It's whatever. It it feels comfortable. It works nice. A little wobbly. Not a fan of that. But moving down, we've got the tank shield. Okay, now we've got an air hole. I mean, that's your chimney hole right there, and then you've got your fill hole, which is a flathead, which is why it comes with the speed driver, among other things. So this is a plexiglass tank. It's Pyrex slash glass, really thick, advertised as six mils. Not gonna fit six mils in there. Um, I filled this tank up multiple times. It's a thirty mil bottle. That does not look like I've put four tanks in here. So anyway. It has a ledge on the tank. That's what the shield sits on. The threads here on the top cap. All right, there's threads there. Whatever threads, and it just ties tight. Goes right on there. Okay. Moving down, it's got an O-ring here that's holding on to the bottom cap. That's the chimneys inside there, and then you got your airflow control. Three holes, and the threads on this are very nice. They just glide, and it works. And then the adjustable center pin on the 510 connection with, for the flathead. All right, so what can I tell you? It's been working very well, phenomenally well. It's let me let me take a hit on this for you real quick. Do, 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 do. What do I got it on? I've got it on a uh, a cyborg running at 15 watts. 15 watts, 1.40 coil. Microcoil 8 9 wraps of 28 gauge can't fall microcoil cotton build. Oh man, that tastes good. It tastes great. Phenomenal. One of the best vapes I've had. I've had a lot of vapes. And this one, I, I won't put it down. What am I smoking in here? I'm smoking number eight by two peas in a pod. His name's Rick. He, he, uh, he makes some good juice. He sells it to all the local vape shops here in Washington. Um, and uh, I, I keep buying it. I don't know why. I usually smoke like El Camino and Melon Boba, but anyway. So I'm going to show you how to build this. I'm going to go into detail with it. So here you go. Here's the video I shot this morning on building this. All right, guys. Here's the up close with the Fogger V2 build tutorial. Um, That's all we're going to need for now. Whoop. Okay, so the Fogger V2, it's it's complicated, guys. It really is. Um, it's not the nicest thing. I've seen it done easily, and it's, it's not nice. All right, so I have my microcoil. Okay. Now, I want to preform this microcoil. Much easier if you preform it. Now... Drill bits don't like to go in here. Okay? So I'm kind of 
jimmy my drill bit in there through the bottom just like that why am I doing that? I'm gonna put my coil on here okay I don't want to mess up my micro coil there it is okay so I'm gonna back up here Let me move this. I need to get closer to myself here. Get it? They're now closer to me. We're closer. We're closer. Now I want both those wires. I'm going to have this stay into a different focus mode, guys. Right there. Bam. Alright, so. I want those wires coming off the bottom, not the top. The top will be backwards. The bottom, I'll be able to have much more control over them. Um, the trick, that drill at the bottom, as you can see, right here, down here, you don't want to touch that. It'll it'll melt. If I, it'll melt. That's it. Okay. Put this coil back on once again. Alright, now I'm going to try to get this, you know what I forgot to do, I forgot to loosen these, so I'm loosening them now, okay they're loose, now I'm going to get these coils back there, bam, I got one wire down in there, since I did that, I'm going to try to stretch this other wire behind the other one. Boom, got it. Now, I've got them both in there. But I want that coil centered more. And I don't want to do too many adjustments once it's done. Because, to be honest, it'll break this wire. Due from my experience, it has just broken the wire. Now, since I use cotton on my beds, I do like to, uh, well, it doesn't want to get in there, does it? There it is. Bam. Now I've got the drill bit connected to the other side so that I have a little bit more control with my little flathead here. Keeping it there might be the trick. Alright, so now I'm going to try to move this to the center. Hmm. This might be very difficult to keep on camera, for sure. Oh, nice, I got that drill bit in. That is a first for me, guys. The drill bit is never going all the way through like that. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to pull this. This needs to be tighter, for sure. Holy shit. Now here's another thing. This post, the positive post, it is, there's an insulator next to it, and I don't like that insulator at all, guys. It, um, freaks me out, to be honest. I think it's gonna break. I honestly do. Alright, that's, that's, that's golden, guys. That's good, and I like that. Alright, so I'm gonna tighten this one down now. I want to be sure to keep it tight. So I'm going to wrap this. Keep it on my thumb right there. And I'm going to tighten that. Good. That's down there. It's not moving. Move that out of the way. Alright. Now for the other side. Oh man. This is difficult, guys. So I'm going to pull up on it a little bit. Trying to get it down in there. Well, you could pull it into this channel a little bit to get a little bit lower of a groove. Alright, so it's in there. Alright. I'm going to pull on it. Get it underneath that finger. Tighten it down there. Right? 
Oh yeah, it grabbed. Good. They're not. They're, it, it's good. I'm gonna the spin. Oh, look at that! It spin right off. Oh yes, yes. All right. Now I've got my coil. It's built. It's good. Can you just drip it out? It's uh, it's gonna be tight, guys. Here we go. Just twisting it. Just twisting. See what we're doing? I don't like that. These coils aren't even touching anymore. It's it's complicated. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to fix that. If I had my tweezers, it'd be a lot freaking easier. Alright, let me show you the resistance. One point three eight. Higher than I wanted. But I expected that. Um, the device I'm using, I'm not too worried about it. Cyborg. I can pump that up as high as I want. Now, as you saw, I have a lot of wraps on here. Alright, ready? Whoa, look at that light show. That's at 15 watts. It's coming out to 1.4 ohms on here. It's fine. I'm going to turn that down for this. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just warming that up. Above that air hole. That's a lot of wraps, baby. What's up? I like it. All right, so I'm going to take my cotton here. I'm going to twist a little bit of it. Actually, quite a bit of it, but it's okay. Right through the hole. Like that. Damn. I want your cotton. By the way, these are. I'll show you later. Just messing with the cotton. Sometimes I can't get these long ass ends. There we go. They're not very helpful. Alright, so I like to put my thumb, you can't see that, but whatever, on the end of the coil while I pull this through so the coil doesn't move. Alright, now I got the cotton in the coil, the other end's bigger, but I don't care. As long as it fills up that gap. Now if you want, you tighten it like that. You can even press, and this is important, given that press right there, it's going to help me later. Simple thing, but it helps. Alright, so, now that we got that done, we're going to I'm not even going to trim them yet. Now, cotton, you can't dry burn. Obviously, you saw that I didn't dry burn the cotton. I'm going to put some juice on here. Now, what I like to do anyway, once I'm done building this, is let it sit for a minute. Let it soak up real well. But, there's a little bit of juice on there now. And now we've got that tight. All right, so now I'm gonna cut the. I'm gonna just cut my wicks. All right, do a little wiggle shake there. Mm. Cut can be a pain sometimes. In the 
these aren't my normal clippers. All right, I'm gonna cut the other side. Got some juice on there, so I can play with that pretty easily, actually. And that does not uh, play nicely. All right, let's uh, the tank. I kind of spin it a little bit to get that cotton going in that direction, so it doesn't get caught in that O-ring. And bam, it's in there. If I use a syringe, air will escape out that hole. If I use a syringe to fill this, you you would be fine. But I'm not going to use a syringe. I'm going to take number eight by two peas in a pod. I'm going to use that end. It does work, okay? If you do it with this tank upright, you are going to flood the shit out of it. It's going to be over. Okay? So I take that off. I'm going to do this upside down. Now you got to make sure you have a firm press. All right, we're back. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've taken this screw out of here. All right, we got it all put together now, except for the top cap. Now filling this, okay, filling this, you don't need a syringe tip. Some people think you need a syringe tip. You're going to flood it if you go like this. You're going to flood it. Go upside down, press that against it pretty firmly to fill that whole hole and start pushing. Now I want to show you something. If I do this and I let go, it's going to suck all the juice back in. So you do it until the tank gets full. Right, I do it till right around there and flip it out. All right. I don't feel like messing with the syringe tip. Now if you did that like this, just like that, you would have noticed this would have just started flooding. It would have just started pouring everywhere. And you know what this is also telling me? This is telling me I can tell that it didn't flood, okay? And it's not flooding. Because if it's if I would have flooded it when I filled it, or maybe if my canals weren't fully covered, it would be flooded already. No gurgle. So it's good. Alright guys, so we're back. We built it, I'll show you how to build it. That's the same coil I have in here now. And um, what what can I say about it? I mean, the tank works great. It works phenomenally. I, I will keep using it. It's my main it's my main thing right now. It's all I've been using. And um, now let's go into uh, what I think maybe quality control could be used a little more. Now the tank here. Here's a picture. You see that that chip in the tank? Now, I mean, I don't care. The chip in the tank's right here, and it's below the O-ring, so it's not affecting the quality. It's not affecting the quality of my vape. It's not making leaking. Nothing like that. All right. Um, but do I want a chip in my tank? No, I don't want a chip in there. Do I have it? I do. So that's one thing. The second thing is right here there's the ledge and that's where the top cap sits right so you've got the chimney here now if you leave your device like this for a while it's not going to happen right now because it's such a minuscule amount of juice but it, it a little bit tends to maybe it's condensation but it tends to come up through here maybe get trapped in there and fall back in the casing here and here's a couple pictures of it and you can see the juice there building up on that section and maybe in the top cap but not enough for you to ever care or notice about. It doesn't get all over your device. And so I would say that it's, I wouldn't even call it, I mean, obviously it's a flaw, but nothing for anyone to care about. It's not a big deal. Oh, man.
Oh, that tastes so great. That juice is... It's nice. Alright. So, what have I tried in here? The original build, it comes with a stainless steel hybrid mesh wick, and uh, it was... I looked at it, and I took it right out, and I said, no. So I tried another build with stainless steel that I had made the night prior, um, waiting for this. And so I got its size, and I put it in there, and I put the, there's an O-ring that comes on the device that's covering, like, you got to take it off to uh, put, take the wick out or put the wick in, which is a hassle a little bit. But, I mean, it's not hard by any means. So one of these little white O-rings, you stretch on top of it, and it helps prevent the flooding. And so I flooded it. I did. And so then I tried it with some silica on top of it, kind of like Phil does in his, his type of GT video. I did put the O-ring on it. Probably shouldn't have done that because then all of a sudden it was just dry hits. Um, and then I said, you know, forget what it, forget it. And I, I built it again with, with cotton. This is the second cotton build in it. And it worked great right off the bat. No flooding, nothing. Great flavor. And um, after that, I did another build with stainless steel mesh again and, you know, a flavor stick on top of some 2 millimeter silica without the O-ring, and it worked great. Now, I uh, then moved back to my cotton. I, I just like cotton. It's easy. I have cotton. I have a whole bag of these cotton balls right here from Safeway. And um, you can blow them if you want. I don't. There, I have a bag sitting at home. I have a bag here. So anytime I feel like it, I just take it apart and put some new cotton in there. I mean, the coil will last, you know, for a long time. So that's how I do it, and uh, that's how I like it. So if you can get this, I would. I have enjoyed it so much. It's been a great tank. And um, I'm just glad I found it when I did because it might be kind of hard to get a hold of now. But uh, I would get this device, guys, and i give it a thumbs up. I would buy it again. If you could buy it, I would. Thanks for joining me on my first video.